My name is Mijane. I am the CEO of Women Enterprises, which houses a private label, um, Main Street, which is a streetwear fashion brand. And I'm from the Bronx, New York. So Women Enterprises is a branding and consultancy agency that I created for 100% black women. Providing jobs, providing um, freelance artists for already existing businesses, providing work, talent, all these different opportunities for people who look like me. Ming goes under that because Ming is our private label brand, um, which houses, you know, fashion wear, street wear, um, not specifically for um, black women only or black people only, but it's made by a black woman, which is me. Um, ironically, Ming Street happened first, um, which is our private label, and then it kind of birthed a bigger uh, vision, which is Women Enterprises. So Ming carries um, very, I guess like pieces for a streetwear minimalist. So when I say this, it's like you have, well, the basis of it is all of our pieces are black and white. Um, just to stick with, you know, it's very clean cut, it's very minimal, but also it's black and white. What you get is what you get. One is, it's two main things. Um, well, three. So the first thing that made me do it is, I feel like being a fashion slash marketing um, person who is black, automatically, like when you graduate college and you come out, uh, a white person is their resumes are here and yours are here right so there's not an equal advantage my professor was like you can't do that kind of business or you can't work for this kind of company solely off the fact of I'm not experienced enough I don't look like everybody else in the agency or facility and I really wanted to do a 360 with that and just kind of be like I can do it and it's not really gonna be the color of my skin that makes the difference but it's gonna be my work ethic right that's how Ming came about and my dad has said like you, you weren't created to work for someone. Like you've always had this type of attitude and the work ethic for someone who is supposed to be an entrepreneur or is supposed to, you know, just do something for themselves. And it really encouraged me to create a safe space for women who look like me, but to also push the motive that black women do get along with each other. We can create something big and create something beautiful while doing so, you know? God spoke to me clear as day, like this is what it's gonna be called. This is what it's gonna look like. And I took that and I ran with it. Yeah, so I chose, this is like very cheesy, but like fashion chose me, okay? <laughs> Say that because I've always had an eye for like the, the creating part, right? Whether that looks like helping women, helping um, people with marketing, brand design, whatever. I've always had that in me, but the thing about fashion is that it showed me how to incorporate all these little aspects about myself and make it one. So branding, marketing, turning uh, nothing into something. When I get dressed, it's how I brand myself. It's how I market myself. It's how I show people like, cause I'm gonna give y'all the tea on these pants, right? So these pants I got from Urban, I legit sat in them and they ripped. So then the next time I wore them, I literally ripped them some more. And I was like, you know what? Because we're not about to keep going to stores and spend their money on pants and wasting, wasting the money. So we're gonna wear these pants, we're gonna put some under them and that's just gonna be it. But that's to me, like I love to preserve things that I think are beautiful. I love to, um, take something that the average person might throw away and just be like, nah, there's still work that can be done. So um, fashion gives me the freedom to combine all of my gifts and talents and you know, make it mesh. Oh God, my personal style is like very random. Like one day I could be feeling calm and then the next day I could be feeling eclectic. And then one day I feel classy and it's so funny because my style is like very, I think random is the best like way to put it, only because I've tried to have a look. You know, like certain people, uh, they have a look, like you know what to expect when you see them, like they're either gonna have on all black or they're gonna have on 
um, a suit or they're gonna like have certain silhouettes that define them. And I struggled for so long, like, yo, I don't have a look. And then my husband was like, well, at the time he wasn't my husband, but like before he was like, your randomness is a look. Like people know that when they see you, it's just gonna be like, she's wearing whatever she wanna wear and you just gotta respect it. So I think I would just uh, describe my style as super random. So I feel like I don't stay up to date with the trends and in fashion industry only because like I told you, like I don't really like, obviously people walk around and I'm on Instagram. So like I see what's trending, but like for example, this summer, like ones with socks, basketball shorts and t-shirts was a trend. So like I choose different aspects from the trend, I guess, and make it my own. So like, if I like shorts, if I like the shorts, the kind of short, like the mesh short, I think was in this summer. Um, or if I like the graphic tee, like I'll do the graphic tee with like some flare pants and some heels. Like just taking different um, pieces from, you know, whether it's pop culture, what's trending, whatever it is, and using that in my own way. I try to find inspiration from nature or from like paintings or um, from a movie or reading. I really study people when it comes to fashion just because like sometimes when we study people we tend to like imitate what they've done but if I had to say like two people that I love their fashion it would definitely, well three, definitely gonna have to say Rihanna, um, Tiana Taylor, and then June Ambrose. And I say those three because they can be put in a box. Like they can come in here with a gown on or come in here with their pajamas. And either way, you know, it's gonna be crazy, right? Um, as far as a person outside of those three, I would have to say like uh, my grandmother before she passed, she was the main person um, like, yo, be yourself, you know? like. I don't care what your parents are saying, mind you, that's her own son. Like, I don't care what anybody in the family is saying. If you wanna wear your shoes on the wrong feet, wear them on the wrong feet. Like, that's just how she was coming. Mm. The first thing that came to mind is like being true to you. Um, that's something I struggled with for a long time. Like, I conformed um, my own creativity, my own ideas, my own like exploration and my process to make it look like others. And I completely lost myself and lost the vision for myself and for my brand. But I think when you stay like stuck to the, to the initial goal and the initial vision, um, you won't lose yourself. There's so many different designers, but what makes you, yours different or what makes your brand uh, successful is that people can't find what you bring to the table anywhere else. You know what I'm saying? If you want to wear all your clothes backwards, nobody's going to tell you you can't do that. Like, that, that, that's what makes you you. Um, it's very important to have, like, good spirits and good um, motivational, whether it's people, music, or anything surrounding you while you're in a creative space, right? So you don't want to create out of, like, darkness. Because when you create out of darkness, you birth things that are dark, and you don't want that to translate into your work, right? And the people that you keep around you is gonna like, that kind of flows into the third point that I was gonna say. Um, keep people around you that believe in your vision, believe in your goals, believe in your dreams. First and foremost, follow me at Mijanae Angelique. I'm gonna have her put it in there because that's a mad letter. Um, also follow Woman Enterprises and follow Ming Street. I have um, like a panel discussion type podcast, a visual podcast thing coming up for Women Enterprises. So we'll be promoting black businesses. Uh, we'll be hiring pretty soon, which I'm super excited about. And then we'll also be doing a lot of networking. Um, as far as Ming Street, I can't tell everything just yet, but please follow us at Ming Street because we're taking a turn from not just being a brand that provides um, clothing to, you know, as a retail service, but we're also providing wholesale garments and we're um, breaking the barrier and getting into that industry. So I'm super excited about that. Oh, my God.